Hey everyone, welcome back and in this video, let's just discuss an interesting topic in JavaScript which are my five favorite do's and don'ts as a developer, even as a senior developer, I should rather say because this is something as a mistake we can all make, right? But let's just go ahead and discuss my top five list here. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So I'm going to start with number one, which I feel a lot of people still don't make use of. That is making use of strict mode in JavaScript. Now, now, as you can also see on MDN's documentation, strict mode is really recommended and is actually enabling a complete different set of way the JavaScript engine views your code, right? A lot of things which are marked as warnings are actually converted into errors if you are using strict mode in JavaScript. And enabling strict mode is also not difficult. All you have to do is in your JavaScript file, use the used strict mode at the top of your JavaScript file inside of double quotes or single quotes. The moment you do that, a browser engine, for example, V8, if it sees it, it's going to trigger the strict version of JavaScript. As you can already see on MDN, that there are a bunch of advantages and a bunch of things which you get out of strict mode when you're using it properly. The second point, which is super important again, as a JavaScript developer, and sometimes even for senior JS developers, is that actually use JavaScript in monomorphic way. What does this term exactly mean? Because I know that a lot of people here would not have an idea on what monomorphic and polymorphic thing is so instead of going to go into definition I'm gonna give you a very simple example let's say you have a JavaScript function named add right and you expect two numbers X and Y and you just return X plus Y now what happens in JavaScript is that if you call this function over and over again with just numbers right so if you call this function something like add one two add four five and you keep on calling it in your application like this what will eventually happen is that if you keep on calling this with just numbers javascript internally v8 internally would optimize the machine code for this and the way v8 works is for example initially let's say you're writing this code what v8 would do in the machine language the machine code itself is that it will say that we have an argument x, we have an argument y and then we need to call this function in JavaScript world to get the result. But after optimizing it, V8 could actually see that hey, because you are using only numbers with this function, I'm just going to optimize this in a way where I don't have to call this in a JS way. I can just directly call it in the machine code, which is, you know, x86 or whatever, EAX and EBX the registers and you can all actually see this example which is documented in, in some v8 repo as well but what happens if you start calling it in a way like this add 2 and a for example then of course you know javascript that it will return you to a as a string but the moment you do this the v8 engine internally de-optimizes this function that means this function would now run much slower in fact 10 to 100 times slower for some in some cases compared to its monomorphic version so monomorphic version was the one where you were only passing in a single input a single type of input and polymorphic version was the one where you know the javascript compiler has to de-optimize its optimization and then call the js version again and again right so the flexibility which javascript gives you comes at a huge performance hit which the javascript engines try to fix by optimizing the code but if you do weird stuff within the js world like this for example and sometimes it's not even weird for example you might be following a pattern which is like an array of objects where the first element is a number and second element is a string you know and it's, it's, a, it's a very well pattern right it's there's nothing wrong with this pattern but it is possible that if you use this pattern then javascript engine is not able to optimize your code in your javascript code properly and it de-optimizes it it will still run it obviously because javascript supports it but it will not be as performant you will have a 10 to 100 times performance penalty on such codes the third tip which i have for you is to actually use strict equality in javascript now there is absolutely no reason at all to use double equality in javascript there is there's absolutely no reason to at all except for only single reason which I know is that if you want to compare a variable with both undefined and null together because when you use double equality then undefined and null actually just match you know in a, in a single statement so you don't have to do value triple equal to undefined or value triple equal to null right this is the only valid case which i know and again this also becomes sometimes confusing so you should probably avoid this as well but other than that there is no reason not to use triple equality in javascript it will save you tons of headaches tons of type coercions and javascript madness if you want to say it in that way so small tip but super important tip always try to use triple equality in your javascript code base my fourth tip for you 
is don't pollute prototypal chains of native data structures. For example, string, number, etc., object, etc., et right? Because what happens is that I'm not sure if you, how many of you have heard about Moo tools, but Moo tools is slash was a system where it heavily added features to JavaScript by prototyping on top of existing data structures, right? String, numbers, objects in JavaScript. Now, the way these things were implemented, because MooTools was very popular back in the days, when new standards of JavaScript came in, for example, ECMAScript, which released features like includes on string and contains and so on. So they were not able to release it properly because MooTools was a very widespread library and it patched a lot of functions in the prototypal chain itself, right? Which led to the fact that the community decided that if we ship this as a new feature in the language itself, it will break a lot of existing web. So similarly, anytime you use a library or you do it yourself where you pollute the native, you know, prototypal chain of a data structure, of a native data structure, you actually contribute to the world where we might have restrictions on what features ship to these new prototype chains. Because the fundamental philosophy of web is that we don't try to break the web, right? The sites which are working 20 years before should still be working now in modern browsers. And we cannot do that if we actually pollute the place, the very own place where the new features have to be added. That is the prototypal chain. So don't use libraries like MooTools or don't use features which actually require you to directly add to string dot prototype dot something something because there are obviously there are always better ways, better methods, better techniques to use, but don't use these libraries and practices yourself because you'll probably be contributing in a web where the web is rigid and it cannot grow. My fifth and the final tip is always try to use modern syntax over the primitive one. The best example for this is async await over promises, promises over callbacks and you know basically callbacks was the first thing in JavaScript because when you use modern syntax not only do you make your code read and feel much simpler but it also helps you sometimes in performance right because modern features we accept are more performant better implemented and are much more secure in terms of bugs and stuff so async await is definitely an example of this promises is an example of this over callbacks the let and const variable declaration is an example of this use strict is also something I would put in, in modern syntax, although it's not modern syntax, it has been alive, you know, there for a while, but still you should use all these good modern practices. Don't, please don't follow video tutorials with war or, you know, please don't follow video tutorials which teach you older practices. JavaScript has matured a lot and it's much more easy to work with if you do just a few things right, you know, using strict mode, not doing war and older syntax and so on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my top five do's and don'ts with JavaScript. If you are a JavaScript developer, hopefully these were helpful. If they were, let me know in the comments below, which one did you find the most interesting? That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching.